Hello, I'm Steve Muskery and welcome to Workshop Essentials. There have been times in my life when I've wanted a horizontal borer or horizontal drilling machine. And I've got a job coming up where really and truly the only way of getting the hole where I want it is to lay the thing down flat. I can't do it on my drill press. So it's a good excuse to start building a horizontal drilling machine. The jig consists of a baseboard with a few blocks screwed to the underside. And that locates over the front corner of my bench like that, to leave this end overhanging a bit. There is a vertical mounting plate which pivots at this point here, so it moves up and down like that. And that gives me height adjustment for my, the position of my drill. We can lock it anywhere we like. The motor is an old corded drill. We've all got one of these kicking around at the back of the cupboard, haven't we? And if you haven't, you'll definitely know somebody who has, because we're all cordless these days. And this one's got flats on the collar, which is jolly handy, actually, because it means that I can clamp down on a flat. There's a pressure pad inside here, which I'll show you later. But that's clamping on that flat. If you've got a perfectly round collar, you might want to shape the pressure pad to be round as well, to match but that is now very firm indeed. I've got a two-part fence, and this can be used in two positions. It can run in this V-groove here, because there's a, there's a key on the bottom there. I can push it in and out by hand, like that, or I can put it in that one and position it there. And there's a couple of Bristol levers to hold it in place. This has got fine adjustment because it's in two parts. So this top piece here slides backwards and forwards, but it slides at a slight angle, an angle of one to 10. So that as I move it 10 millimeters in that direction, it moves one millimeter in this direction. And obviously back the other way. I've also got fine adjustments on the height as well because I've got a, a little adjuster block. It consists of a locking lever to hold it in place, but I've also got an M6 bolt. And a pin to stop the whole thing from spinning. And that goes into my groove, into my curved slot. So that goes like that. The fine adjuster starts in the roughly midway in its travel, like that, and goes down so that it locates this little bolt head, which is acts as a sort of anvil, so that the base doesn't get chewed up. That gets locked there. And now, I can do that. I have got a fine adjustment. Very fine adjustment, actually. And because the uh, drill itself is about halfway between this position here and the pivot point, it means that altering the fine adjuster by one millimeter moves the drill up and down by 0.5 millimeters because of this two to one relationship. It's not exact, I know, because as you move up, it moves slightly that way and as you move down, it moves slightly this way. So it's not exactly two to one, but it's very close and it is infinitely variable. So that's the jig. Let's have a go at making it. The prototype that I made last week works so well, there's very, very little I want to change and nothing I've really got to change. But this is the mounting plate I made last week, and it's 16 millimeter ply. The, there is a clamping hole for the, for the drill through here, and there is a little pressure plate in there so that the color of the drill doesn't get chewed up. And that pressure plate is very, very small. 
So I'm going to have a bit more meat on this edge so I can put a bigger pressure pad in there. So this piece is going to be, I've used this as a template and I've added another, oh, I don't know how much, 16 millimetres perhaps, five eighths of an inch, uh, to this edge. So I have got a pivot hole and I've set my trammel, my router. And this hold fast, as well as giving me the right, as I was holding it down, is going to act as a stop at this end. So let me see where, how far I need to go. I've marked it out. It's not critical, but that will do nicely. And I can't put the stop, I can't use it as a stop at this end. There's not enough room. But I need to stop when that, um, when the trammel bar ends up parallel with that edge. So providing I've got room to swing, that can go there. Excellent. So now I've got to, and I'm overhanging of course, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna route my bench away. That's rock solid. These are brilliant, you know, I should have bought these years ago. Uh, so now we can start routing. So I've finished my fine adjuster. It's got an embedded nut on the back for the clamping lever and it's got an M6 bolt in here which will give me the fine adjustment. And there's also an alignment pin so that when that goes in there like that, the block will always stay parallel to the bed of the, of the actual machine. When that is hard up there, as far as it will go, that means that the drill will be as low as it can go. So I need the centre of the drill to be at, at least down to the uh, bed of the machine. So that's going to be the centre of my drill. And to get that, I'm going to mark exactly halfway between my fine adjuster screw and the pivot point. Now that's 280 millimetres there. So that's quite handy, 140 millimetres. 140 millimetres is there. And that is going to be the hole for my drill. At this point, I cut the mounting plate into a pie shape so that I could work out exactly where the clamping mechanism would go. It's much easier to mark the position of the collar clamp while I've still got access to that hole position. So. A line down there and then one across there as well. So now I can create a 42 millimeter hole which is not a standard size. Now I don't know about the rest of the world but in the UK and in Europe the collar of an electric drill has a standard size of 42 millimeters and has done for donkey's years. Now, 42 millimetres, unfortunately, is not a standard drill size. I don't have a 42 millimetre drill in my set. So how do we make a 42 millimetre hole? Well, we can start with a 35 millimetre force nivet. Okay, 35 millimetres is a standard size for kitchen cabinets because it's what you use for a, a Euro hinge. Uh, so I'm going to start with 35 millimetres on my drill press. And then over on the router table over there, I'm going to cut an eighth of an inch rebate, which will increase the diameter by a quarter of an inch. That's 6.35 millimetres. So that takes me to 41.35. I can then flush that up and finish it off on the bobbin sander to get me a nice snug fit for the collar of my electric drill. Now I said it was 42 millimetres, but I think it's possible I got that wrong because I've measured this and it's most definitely 43 and there's very, very little clearance in that. So either way, it's not a standard size, but that way now I've got a hole which matches that collar quite nicely. But I've got my clamping screw in there. 
it will be snug as a bug in a rug. Now this is my prototype and there is a cavity inside there which takes a pressure pad like this. You can see how tiny it is. That just goes in there and that clamps the top of the collar so that the plastic doesn't get chewed up by the Bristol lever. So we've got to make that cavity inside the plywood and we do that by some very careful routing. Um, I'm going to make it so that I can use a much bigger pressure pad here. That's why, if you look at these two, that's why I've left more meat here than I've got here. Okay, above the hole. So that goes on there like that and I just set up my cross mortise router jig. Workshop Essentials, Workshop Essentials Volume 2. An excellent jig this is. Really, really good. My first cut is for the Bristol lever itself, and I want this to be in the middle. So the workpiece is 18 millimetres thick, and so I want to go three millimetres beyond that because this is six millimetres in diameter. So I've got nine and three is 12 millimetres. So lock the router down on the surface of the plywood, and then I've got 12 millimetres worth of spacing, which goes in there like that. So now I should be able to route away between those two and end up with a slot which will take this exactly in the middle. That is rather splendid. This is the finished mounting plate and if it looks a little bit different to what it did in the previous scenes, there's a reason for that. Uh, it is different. I had a little accident. Now I don't have many accidents. Mistakes, yes, mistakes are plenty, but I don't have many accidents and when I do I try to work out exactly what went wrong so that I can avoid making the same mistakes again. But I've thought about this and thought about it and I have absolutely no idea what I did wrong. I just know that as I was drilling this final hole for the barrel nut, the thing exploded on me. There's no other word to describe it. There was a bang and it just went... And this is a photograph of the aftermath. This is what it looked like. And I didn't have any more plywood. And not this, not this nice Baltic birch ply. So what I've done is I've rebuilt this, which means routing out a cavity, gluing a piece in, routing out for the uh, pr pressure pad and the barrel nut block, gluing a piece in, routing out on the other side and so on. And each one, you have to wait for it to dry properly in between. So this little mishap has set me back about a day and a half, actually. Uh, but it is now right and it's not just OK, it's actually very good indeed. And that pressure pad just pops in there like that. The fence that I made for my prototype was very basic. It was just two pieces of plywood biscuited together to make an L shape with a diamond key set into the underside and a couple of clamping slots. And that was it. So you could move it two foot towards and further away from the drill bit to get your offset. But no fine adjustment on it. Got fine adjustment on the height? but none on the lateral adjustment. So I've decided that for my Mark II version, I'm going to make a fine adjuster lateral fence as well. So we do that by having two surfaces that move over each other at an angle. Now, the angle I'm going to choose is 1 to 10 because I work in millimetres. And if you work in inches, well, so you're right, but if you work in inches, then uh, make it at 1 to 8. And then if you move it, an inch in one direction, it will move an eighth of an inch in the other direction. Uh, but I'm going to use 1 to 10. I've got a, a 1 to 10 wedge. This is the off cut of it. I've got it set against two um, bench dogs here. Uh, and then I'm going to cut a, a, a straight V groove in, the, in my fence using the edge of my bench as the straight edge. And that way I shall end up with a V groove in my fence plate, which is 
counted at one to 10. So that as I move the second part of the fence that way by one centimeter, it will move this way by one millimeter. And that way I can move it a millimeter that way quite, you can easily measure a millimeter and that ends up laterally 0.1 millimeters, which is the thickness of a hair. You know, so how fine do you want? It's woodwork. So I've got my workpiece clamped down. Now I do have to be careful because I've only got room to use one hold fast. Um, I was hoping to use two, but I can't, if I get my um, router back to the starting point, there isn't enough room to use my hold fast. So, and, and that's also right on the very edge, so, but I've <laughs> beaten the living daylights out of it and that isn't going to move. And I'm pressing that way anyway. So I've got my workpiece, my one in 10 wedge, and then a couple of bench stops. And um, I think I'm ready to go. Now, I can't afford to mess this up because you only get one shot. So fingers crossed, eh? Well, that's a bit deeper than I intended, actually, but it doesn't matter so long as the two match. The absolute depth is, is irrelevant, but uh, that's a very generous, nothing's going to, very generous slot that is. Okay, good. So now, there we go. So now I've got to cut a corresponding one in the bit that's going to slide over here. The piece that slides over it will also have a V groove in it. Uh, but it has to be the mirror image because these two are going to go face to face. So I've got my wedge turned the other way around. In fact, I'm using a different wedge. I'm using the off cut from this. This is what I used before, but this is actually too wide. Uh, the front of the workpiece overhangs the bench and I need this clear for my, for my fence. So I've used the off cut from it, which is of course the same angle. And I've also left my workpiece longer than I, I want in the end so that I've got somewhere to some means of clamping it. So I've got my offset correct, just about. It's not critical, but that is right. And here we go. Lovely jabbly. Very good. So now I've got to make a key that will keep those two together. The last job with the wedge is to cut the adjustment slot. So I've changed my cutter for a quarter inch. I've also had to put a deeper fence on here uh, because it was, I've lifted this up because I've got to go all the way through. So it's on a bit of scrap so that I don't damage my bench. Uh, and then it cleared, the, <laughs> it cleared the edge of the bench. So I've had to put a, a bigger fence on. I've got no stops, I've got no means of stopping this, so I'm just going to have to go by eye. I've marked fairly clearly where it is, there to there. Uh, oh, I need some air, and I need some volts. I've got my eyes, I need some ears. And everything is secure. Oh, that isn't, that isn't. Oh, goodness me. There we go. Right. Ooh. Very good, Steve, very good. Now, before I glue my fence to the top carriage, I need to make sure that it is in the same um, alignment with the axis of the drill. So I'm gonna put that there like that, where it's gonna get glued, and just clamp it in place like that. And then I can check 
to see if it's square to my mounting plate. And that goes in there like that. And I can see that there is a tiny, tiny gap at this end. It's not very much, but it means that my workpiece will be heading off in that direction very slightly. So now is the time to do something about that. I, don't have to, I won't be able to do anything about it once I've glued this in place. But if I remove a small amount, and it is a small amount, I mean, I'd say that was no more than half a millimetre over that distance. So I need to remove a little bit of this top carriage before I glue this on, if I want it to be square. That's what I want. Perfect. Jolly good. So now I can biscuit that in place and I think we're finished. Goodness gracious. <laughs> That's good. Right. Well, we'll leave that there until tomorrow now because it's not enough time. And then we can try it out. So we're ready to assemble this little beauty. I've got my baseboard, which has got a few blocks screwed to the underside. Uh, two of them located against the corner of my bench and these two support the mounting plate. So that goes over there like that and gets held in place. Good. The fence, the two-part fence goes on. So that's located in the, on the um, diamond key. And the top half locates in that one. And you can see now that as I move that back and forth, it also moves left and right. The mounting plate goes this way round. You need a couple of Bristol levers. And finally, the fine adjuster. So the peg goes through the slot and then we find the fastening hole. There we go. And that moves up and down like that. And so that is assembled now. We're ready to put the drill in. Now the collar of this drill has actually got some flats on it. So I'm going to make sure that the pressure pad presses on one of those flats. So that goes in there like that. And that is really very solid indeed. Good. So I'm now going to test to see how well aligned the whole thing is. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> right, if we measure that there, that says 24.32. And if we measure it there, 24.38. <laughs> I think that's close enough, don't you? <laughs> Fourteen point nine. <laughs> Fourteen point nine three. I think that'll do me. I'm not measuring this again in case it doesn't read the same. <laughs> Well, it looks good. Let's see what the numbers say. Right, 15.75-ish. 15.68. Oh, now 15.69. 15.69. 15.62. Well, that's not bad, is it? That's not bad. And vertically, 4.20. 14.22, 14.20, 14 14.22. You're not going to get any more central in end grain 
than that. I really don't think so. I'm very, very happy with that. I hope you are too. If you've liked this, please remember to like and subscribe and to tell everybody about it. And uh, my biggest problem now is to find somewhere to keep it. Where on earth am I going to keep this? I'm full. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio.